Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more Democracy 3 Presidential Suite playing as Sweden. In the last video we had our election, we handily defeated the Disciples of Felix, they stood no chance whatsoever, and we were able to put out several of the negative events. Okay, awesome. We have, however, managed to work ourselves into a deficit, and to be fair, that has a lot less to do with the fact that we're spending a lot of money and we're being irresponsible with it as much as it do has to do with the fact that the GDP had a very sudden crash, the flash crash. Which is a little bit bizarre, I I've never seen that event before, so... We're having one heck of a time trying to get our GDP to rise back up. If we could do that, that would solve all of our surplus issues, so I'm hoping this goes away on its own. But even so, you can kind of see that one of the big drivers of the deficit right now is the global economy has been on its way out for quite some time. In fact, actually, relative to the global economy, we're doing pretty well right now. Which uh, is to say that it's still not great, but at least it could be worse? Kinda, sorta? Eh, I don't know. There's a lot of things that we do need to do. I still want to work my way out of this black market, which is probably going to require removing some taxes of some sort. Maybe not a good time to do that when we have a deficit, but certainly would be an option. Tooth Decay is gradually working its way down. And I have no idea if that's due to just increased health in general. I mean, it doesn't say that. But it's on its way out, so... Kinda, sorta? I mean, there's a very easy way to solve that problem, and that is to do something like a dental program. Which, perhaps we ought to invest in at least for a little while. But it's not exactly very libertarian-ish to do that now, is it? No, no, not really. Really, the Tooth Decay, all that it does is it slightly lowers our health, which we are currently maxed out on, I believe. Doop -doop. Yes, we are currently maxed out on health. So it's not like this is a huge priority, it's just, this does, it does kind of suck. Asthma Epidemic is going down along with the GDP. If we try to improve the environment a little bit more, it should be even better. That said, what surprises me here is the environment is actually getting kind of close to being maxed out. And yet, asthma is still really bad. It has a lot to do with tobacco usage. Apparently, the Swedes really, really like to smoke. Well, we can try to solve that. All we have to do is just tax uh, the tobacco a little bit more. Yeah, that'll reduce it a fair bit. Of course, it makes everyone unhappy to do so. Poverty apparently goes up, equality goes down. Black market also goes up, so it's not something I really feel like I can do right now, but that's the issue. Gosh dang it, guys, if you stop smoking, maybe you won't have asthma. I don't know. I mean, supposedly that's how it's gonna work. I'm not too sure. I will say, going for a, um, libertarian-ish playthrough is proving relatively difficult for me. Um, I, I have so many different policies that I want to enact that will help solve all these issues, but... I'm trying to hold back and not go too crazy. Dementia's not doing all that better. Great, great. Hmm. I will say one thing that I was surprised to see, by the way, in the last video, is a lot of Swedes uh, talking about the maternity leave that I decided to cancel last time. Here it is. Or at least reduced down to half pay. Some people were rather upset about that. I'm kind of surprised. First off, in the United States, we take that for granted. We don't really have... Uh, mandated maternity leave here in the first place. I know a lot of the Western world does, but we do not. But look at the maternity leave here, I mean, okay, so for the sake of pride and national pride and stuff, you don't need to change this. Okay, I get it. But come on, look at this and tell me that it's good for this playthrough. You increase maternity leave, you're upsetting conservatives, okay, they don't mind, they don't, they don't matter that much, fine, that, that's no big deal. But productivity going down even further? Come on. That's not that great. You know what's better? You know, we got childcare benefits, you could spend a bit more money on this, this makes parents happy, liberals happy, more people become parents, their income goes up, and equality goes up. Actually, one thing that's really interesting about this, it says that capitalists are opposed to such unnecessary level of interference by the government, and yet capitalists are not affected at all. Is that a bug? That's different from the uh, the base game. This is in the mod pack, but I feel like it ought to have some downside. I mean, literally, in this case, this is just spending money for only good things to happen. Now, granted, it's a lot of money that I don't think I can afford, but that's certainly better than your maternity leave. What about the childcare provisioning? This actually increases your productivity. You know? You can go right back to work and your children are taken care of. Don't worry, courtesy of the government. I'm just saying. Like, at least as far as the game is concerned, maternity leave is just not that great. There are more effective options. Whether the game is accurate? Hey, I don't know. But that's what it seems to say. Alright, state pensions. Guess what? I don't like you. Um, we're going for a more libertarian playthrough, which means we do not want to have so much social security. And also, this is costing me a lot of money that I can't really afford. 
So if I reduce you a fair bit, all that happens is capitalists like me more, the retired do not like me that much, poverty goes up a little bit, but we can handle that, socialism membership goes down, retired membership goes down, so there's less people to hate me, private pensions become more and more of a thing. Let's reduce this down to about, let's say, 14 billion crowns per quarter and see how well that works out for us. That's going to be a major expenditure gone. I also will definitely want to reduce our state healthcare services, but that's not a priority at the moment. Oh yeah, we didn't actually go through the, um, the last event, so let's see that now. Our hospitals can now do a simple screening of fetuses for congenital disorders. With today's liberal abortion laws, a positive diagnosis... Well, we did actually just restrict the abortion laws a little bit more, but okay. A positive diagnosis might be a reason to terminate pregnancy. Disability organizations want to see this method outlawed. So we allow the tests. Every pregnant woman should be able to make rules for her own body and deserves the best information available for her choice. Or ban the tests. This is not the same issue as abortion of an unknown fetus, says ethics uh, philosopher Felicia Jansen. When the screening... I'd be interested to know, by the way, are these real people? It might be. Um, when the screening is done, the fetus belongs to a patient group, and if we label people of some diagnosis unfit to live, then we are down a slippery slope toward eugenics. Yeah, that's where I start to see some, some problems. There are definitely some ethical concerns about this leading toward more of a eugenics program. I know this is quite a contentious issue for a lot of people. Hmm. Every pregnant woman should make rules for her own body. Yes, but what about the ethical concerns about another's body? You know, once it's... No I mean, it's not an unknown fetus. Now the screening is done, and it's it's labeled in a, a, a disabilities group. Well, now you're affecting another bo body. I mean, again, this is where I see the eugenics concern. I definitely see the concern here. Uh, for this playthrough, I think we are going to have to allow the tests. There's, there's definitely a lot of controversy around this. I, I definitely can see that happening. But, okay, I think that's what we're going to have to go for. Uh, tourism ad campaign, alcohol awareness. How are we doing as far as our alcohol consumption? Uh, it's going up a little bit. If it goes too much higher, we might actually have a problem with um, the alcohol abuse again. So let's spend a little bit of time trying to reduce alcohol consumption. Now, the downside of this is it's going to reduce the amount of taxation that we are receiving from our alcohol tax. But I'm okay with that. I want to make sure that we don't get the alcohol abuse event again. Air pollution has come right back. Oh, great. Well, this is why the start and the stop trigger are right on top of each other. <sighs> Good grief. Okay. I think one of the things we have to look at with this mod pack is it's not as simple as saying, Oh, no, we have a crisis event. Do everything you can to stop it. No, it's sort of saying, hey, in an industrialized world, you're going to have air pollution. The question is, how much pollution is it? And that's why it scales and you have to pay attention to it. Health goes down the worse it gets. Right? So we have to be very careful about that. But in the meantime, there's just no stopping it. I mean, shy of having the perfect environmental record, I just don't see that being a real thing. So we could try to reduce oil demand. But the only good way to do that is what? Let's see. Global economy, car usage. Reducing car usage even further would certainly help. What's the petrol tax now? 45%. That's pretty close to what I would say is the optimal range to make the most amount of money. So no. Okay. Spelling reform. Through generations, our written and spoken language have diverged from one another. This causes trouble for our school children as well as for immigrant learners. While radical linguists request a spelling reform, the conservatives and retired people believe our language is good as it is. I'm surprised patriots aren't in that category as well. Seems like that would fit. Okay. So keep the old spelling. We need to honor our... I like how you spelled honor with the U, because in the U U.S. We, we don't spell honor that way. Our language and its history. The elderly will have no choice but to cope with the new system and will effectively become less literate. Okay. Or reform spelling. Uh, a spelling reform will make our language easier to learn for students and foreigners. It will improve education in the long run. Okay, that's kind of clever. Well, just by that, I don't think I could justify reforming the spelling. I was thinking that, like, the culture has changed and, like, we're seeing the evolution of language like you saw in China a while ago. Of course, that was, like, a big alphabet change. But even so, I'm saying, like, the natural evolution of language. This is basically saying that text misspellings are becoming language. You know what? No, we're keeping the old spelling. It was good the way it was. Dang it. <laughs> 
Weird. Alright, hey look, our surplus is back. See, the GDP is on its way up. I also did see some comments talking about how I'm trying to increase unemployment and how that's sort of, sort of stupid. It's actually not. Um, by a lot of economist standards, there is a healthy amount of unemployment to try to optimize the, uh, the, co the competitiveness that workers will have to have in order to keep their jobs. And that is overall the best thing for the productivity of a nation, which improves the GDP. Which, by the way, you can see our productivity has been just jumping up ever since we got rid of the labor shortage and the uh, maternity leave. So that's helping quite a bit. So it's actually not quite that stupid. There is a healthy amount of unemployment. So the exact number varies a little bit depending on who you talk to. Uh, in our case, definitely everyone having a job, there, was more biz there were more job openings than there were workers, which was stymieing the economy. Keep in mind when it comes to economy, a lot of it has to do with a balance. A balance between workers and, um, and employers and jobs and stuff like that. A balance between working wages and profit margins. Like there's a lot of balance and when, whenever you become too um, lopsided in one direction or the other, that's when you start to see your economy really suffering. So I think, I think that a little bit of unemployment is, is merited in a real world scenario. In the base game, never. You want to have unemployment just completely eliminated. But at least for now, for now, I think we're okay. All right, as far as expenditure is concerned, uh, the doctor's strike is gone. <sighs> Do I change our state healthcare services now? I mean, health is more or less maxed out. There are some other options, I think, to try and boost our health that are going to be cheaper than the state healthcare services. Yeah, this is one of our big ex uh, expenditures. Let's go ahead and reduce this down toward life-threatening operations only. So we, we basically, okay, before people get upset... <laughs> We are going to be spending government money. Everyone gets a healthcare voucher system they can use to obtain their own healthcare. The free market tries to compete for those uh, for those vouchers. It increases your innovation and reduces costs, at least in theory. And then, for it, the rare circumstance where even that doesn't work, we will have life-threatening only covered by the government. And in the meantime, we will save 27 billion crowns, which is effectively what we're spending on these healthcare vouchers. Sorry, not school vouchers. Uh, healthcare vouchers to begin with. Actually, almost perfectly. Wow, okay. So yeah, that's literally all we've done. Now we've just made the logical transition, siphoning our money away from public sector to the private sector. That's what we're trying to do. Keep in mind, I said before, we're going for a more... Um, we're going for a more libertarian-ish playthrough, so this really shouldn't be surprising to anybody. Uh, National Armed Forces, Witness Protection, I don't think any of that's necessary. I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of money on the bike subsidies, increasing health and reducing car usage, which is both... Both of those are pretty useful for me right about now. Uh, let's move on to the next turn. We're never going to be able to get... <sighs> freaking road accidents. We're never going to be able to get rid of the uh, black market, so long as we have so many dang taxes. That is certainly a problem. Technology bubble bursts. As many international IT companies have posted disappointing income reports, venture capitalists have started to withdraw their investments, panic strikes the market, and many software and online service companies end up in bankruptcy. Sounds like the dot-com bubble. So, the global economy... Oh, wow, this isn't even my fault. This is just a big global economy issue. Wow. So, am I to understand, then, that uh, the GDP... For all oh, the global GDP. Yep, there it goes. There goes the global economy. Wow. That's not my fault, guys. I mean, I, I saw some fairly critical comments in the last couple of videos, but like, this is not my fault. I couldn't handle that. Couldn't help it at all. And if I increase technology, apparently I'm just increasing drug addiction. Oh, good lord. And of course, by reducing our state healthcare services, this is worse than ever. Right. <sighs> well. So the low global economy apparently is increasing drug addiction. That's certainly an issue. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to be able to solve some of these. Now, granted, this is a mod pack. I did say uh, going into this that this would be fairly difficult, that I would make some mistakes, and I want to learn from those. But, man, man alive, some of these are just very unpleasant. All right, what else we got? What would be good? What would be good? Military drones, nuclear programs, signals intelligence? What's this? Interception of signals for national security pr purposes. Some governments propose cable surveillance, in some cases spyware. The computing industry will see this as a method of threat to privacy. I bet you this helps reduce the um, cyber warfare. Which is not something we're worried about right now, but that's a thing. What I ultimately want to work toward is the basic income. 
and see how well this works for us. I'm very curious what this does, but it's incredibly expensive. But the only way that this is going to be effective is if I'm effectively getting rid of all other forms of welfare and replacing it with a basic income. But we'll see. Um, um, telecoms infrastructure? Encourages internet crime. The more educated people are, the more they'll start using internet currency to dodge tax. This sounds like something I don't want to invest in. State industrial investment? No. Resource rationing? No. Intellectual property law? Could be okay. Environmental property rights. Now, this is a very interesting argument for libertarians. Is this something we want to do? What about carbon capture? Oh, so expensive, though. Man, a lot of stuff is really pricey. See, like, mandatory micro-generation costs me practically nothing. Diversity quotas, no. Rare earth metal mining. This would do a lot to improve our productivity, but it's very expensive. Space program, no. Organic um, farming would actually help with the health a lot. It is a distortion of the free market, but let's go for it. So capitalists don't like it, but farmers are thrilled. Farmer membership going up, I do need to be careful about. This improves the environment, not health. It used to improve health, didn't it? I thought it did. Okay, well, at minimum, we're going to get a farmer membership increase no matter what we do. Now, keep in mind, the higher your farmer membership, uh, the more likely you're going to have water shortages and stuff like that. Let's go for a relatively small subsidy for the organic farming. You know what I will say is one thing I really like about this mod pack is it actually is forcing me not to uh, max out a bunch of uh, policies. With some exceptions, obviously, something like this. But I'm actually more inclined to do something kind of more middle of the road. I didn't get that that much in the base game, so this actually makes me kind of happy. What else do we have as far as an expenditure? State housing, huh? We could reduce this. Of course, that increases poverty, apparently. You know what? Let's do a couple things to try and reduce poverty. Um, that's unemployment. Unemployment is actually going way up. Unemployed benefits. Well, apparently giving benefits is uh, making this worse. But it's also trying to reduce our black market. Okay. Work visas, technology, productivity, immigration, GDP. We actually could probably restrict our immigration a little bit more now. Industrial automation is actually going up as technology goes up. That's to be expected. Hmm. Okay, well, what about poverty, though? The alcohol tax, the tobacco tax. Food stamps is already maxed out. Yeah, that is something I did. The black market is actually reducing poverty. Private health care, it says it's increasing uh, poverty, but don't don't forget that we are handing out vouchers, which is greatly increasing the uh, equality and stuff as well. So it's kind of a it's kind of a double edged sword there. Gambling is apparently a thing. Now this does increase the GDP, but poverty goes way up when you do this. If we keep this relatively low. We can reduce the poverty a fair bit. Hmm. I don't know if it's really a very high priority, but it would be a thing. Religious membership. Now, excuse me? I'm sorry, hang on. Religious membership is increasing poverty. The fact that we are religious is making us poor? You want to rethink that one a little bit? Actually, if anything, I would say that there are some, there are some studies that would say that a more religious um, society often will have a uh, more charitable giving and stuff like that as well. Or at least, you know. Okay, really religious societies. I don't mean like, you know, kind of fakey religious. The people who are like, oh yeah, we go to church, but then don't do anything. You know? I don't know, it's a complicated issue, but I don't really see how that's justified. Poor earnings. Poor earnings are going down. That's interesting. A lot of it has to do with some of these taxes. And the fact that we're privatizing a lot of stuff is apparently ru ruining the poor. But there's the healthcare vouchers improving their earnings right back, so... I don't know. We could invest a little bit more in the universities and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, are there taxes that we want to reduce? If you reduce something like the capital gains tax, this is killing our productivity a bit. We could reduce this, and this will improve the financial sector and productivity. 
the wealthy will be a little bit happier. Private pensions becomes more of a thing because people are a better able to invest and uh, reap the benefits. Okay. High earnings goes up a little bit. Good quality goes down. I think we do this. The capital gains tax is definitely a big driver, I think, when it comes to the black market. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm wrong. Okay, that's the sales tax. That's what I'm thinking of. We could also reduce the sales tax. Now, that's giving away a lot of money. Well, I say giving away. It's giving money back to the people. But by doing so, we can try to boost up the equality a little bit. Hmm. What if we sacrificed about 19 billion and went down here to a 17% sales tax? 17% seems really high to me. Really high to me, in fact. But let's go for it. Let's try reducing taxes just a little bit. I'm, I'm curious how well this is going to work. I'm going to make mistakes in this particular playthrough. This is an inevitability. At this point, though, I'm not really worried about winning elections. I think we're pretty much good to go forever. In no small part, because the entire population is now liberal. And liberals, it so happens, are pretty happy with me. So I'm pretty convinced we're going to win every single election. The question now is how best to deal with some of these events. I think we have one more turn before I have to end this video. Oh, a one-party state! Oh, would you look at that? The Disciples of Felix are basically gone forever. Really? Okay. Internet crime is a new thing because technology is too high. Ick. Okay. Air pollution's at an end. Ooh, this is new. Another aerospace... A new, another industry for the GDP? Aircraft and spacecraft are among the most complex machines ever built. A thriving aerospace industry improves our standing abroad. The factories are part of the military-industrial complex, which pushes for the continued spending on military and space flight equipment. Wow, okay, so here's something that helps drive the GDP. How many industries are there? I don't know. Okay, wages are finally starting to come down a bit. Which, believe it or not, is sort of good. Because they were too high to begin with? Ah, gosh, the balancing of this scenario. But look at the unemployment. We have to deal with this. Autonomy for Indigenous Nation. Since time immemorial, an indigenous tribe has lived in a province which was annexed by our country a few centuries ago. Today, some of these people request a local legislature. Autonomy would promote their native language and culture, as well as reducing racial tension. More patriotic members of the tribe are concerned that an autonomous province will become poorer than our country as a whole. We could grant them autonomy. We stole land from the tribe. This sounds more like something that's geared toward the U.S., but I, I don't know about Sweden's history on this. And it's about time we give it back. It might be a setback for welfare, but you could not put a price on freedom. All people should be able to elect politicians who speak their own language or integrate them. Our nation rests on unity and diversity. Our government has functioned well, and we shall not send these people into a poverty trap. So basically, we know better than you. Their culture has survived until today, and it will survive in the future as part of our national heritage. I'm not, I, mm, I'm not sure. Grant autonomy? I hope that was a good call. Surplus has gone down, but there's no surprise. We did just sort of reduce a lot of taxes. So, unemployment is going way higher than it's supposed to. A lot of it may have somewhat to do with the work visas and the increased immigration as a result. We could reduce this a bit now. Let's reduce this a little bit. Let's reduce this, try to improve our uh, wages and our unemployment. We've overcorrected. We have overcorrected in a big, big way. We could also try to reduce immigration a little bit now. Random passport checks? No, we won't have more. We could go back towards some biometric checks. This would actually help reduce the drug addiction and the black market as well. Now, granted, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of concerned about overcorrecting again. But that's kind of hard to deal with, you know? Let's go to about 550 million. We're going to reduce immigration a fair bit. Okay, try to help people keep their jobs. Uh, tourism goes down, yeah, but the black market and drug addiction also goes down a little bit. I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how well this is going to work for us, but we're going to give it a shot. State housing. Uh, I kind of want to go toward uh, better equality. It is going way up, don't get me wrong. Reducing some of those taxes is going to help us go toward an egalitarian society. Pretty quickly, in fact. Um... Fitness tax credits. What if we did this? It would improve... Oh, it reduces obesity. Yes. Uh, jealousy of the unemployed. Nah, I'll do it anyway. 
So the poor don't like it as much, but health goes up, trading units like it, middle income and earnings goes up, and obesity goes down. That's a good use of money. We're gonna, wait, did I just see that right? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where are you? Golf sets? Footballs, track suits, mountain bikes, gym machines. We are subsidizing people to go play golf? I wouldn't even say that that's an incredibly fit sport. But okay, that's apparently a thing. Armed forces weak. That'll upset the public, um, sorry, the, uh, ethnic minorities, I think. Um, we could max out the Race Discrimination Act, but it, it's, it's kind of already kind of close to maxed out. Why is religious membership still so low? Health? Health! The sick. Only, only the sick are interested in God. Really? Again, this seems like a gross oversimplification to me. Religious buildings haven't quite taken effect yet. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we could try to win over the youth. Who doesn't like me that much? Let's see. Parents like me a lot. How about the youth? They don't like me enough. But you know what? I don't care. We're going to go for a tourism ad campaign. We're going to improve foreign relations and hopefully improve tourism, which uh, I hope will help boost the GDP at least a little bit. Productivity is still on its way up. That's good. I want a productive society. I'm just sort of surprised that maxing out productivity is not resulting in as much of a uh, GDP booster as I was hoping for. It's really the global economy. The global economy is what's holding me back. If this were not an issue, I'm pretty sure I'd be up here by now, which would be great. Everyone would prosper from a higher GDP. But that global economy, man, that global freaking economy. Oh yeah, I forgot about internet crime. We'll have to deal with that later. Thank you all very much for watching. Um, there's still a lot that needs to be improved. And I'm, I'm overcorrecting. I definitely am, but I'm learning a little bit. And there are definitely some new industries which are very interesting, and I would like to learn more about it. The question is, how best to find the balance between good business and wages? I mean, I would argue that wages were this high to begin with because they were artificially inflated by government regulation. So maybe this is the market kind of finding its way back to an equilibrium that helps overall boost the GDP. And I think we would see that if it weren't for the global economy. But if you have any ideas that kind of fits the theme that we're going for, I would be very interested in hearing it. So let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.